Welcome back to Deceased, right here at Comic Storian. Comic Storian is the place that we take some of your favorite comic book storylines and we break them down into audio dramas. We take the nitty gritty and we break it down into an audio drama, and I am your narrator, Benny. Now, Deceased the Unkillables is a spin-off series showing what was going on with basically Deathstroke's team and Red Hood's team. And they've all come together now as they are trying to hide out in a school trying to protect a bunch of kids that have somehow survived the apocalypse. There are zombies out there, and they're turned into zombies by looking at screens because the anti-life equation gets into their brain, and there's a lot more to it than just zombies, but you can watch all of our other videos to understand that. And when we last left off, Mirror Master had become one of these anti-life zombies and was going through the mirrors and infecting people of Red Hood and Deathstroke's teams. And the last cliffhanger was that Bane had been taken over. Now let's begin. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Bane rushes forth, the anti-life equation having taken everything from him. Behind him, a wall of the Blighted Ones are following his lead, and Gordon and Deathstroke tell everyone to get inside as the dead draw near. But Grundy is there, leaping through the air, stopping Bane's assault. Bane was strong, but Grundy, he was something else. Bane, no her children! Grundy bellows, tearing Bane's head clean off his body. He launches it across the yard, destroying another of the Blighted One's heads with it. And from inside, Creeper laughs. <laughs> oh, wow. That is the first headbutt I've ever seen without a body behind it. The moment doesn't last long, though, as the undead begin to bog down Grunty. And he yells for the others to run, but the children refuse. Hey, get off our Uncle Grunty! Lolita yells, hefting her bat. They've been training for months with the heroes and villains, and they are ready for this. The kids launch their attack, but Slade and Gordon are there, pulling them away, firing their weapons. Damn it, kids! Fall back! Gordon yells. Don't risk your life for a dead man! Slade agrees, and Creeper launches himself over their heads, pulling the big zombie from the grasp of the undead. Come here, you big, caring dead man! You can't die on Monday! It would ruin your whole poem! Creeper tells his friend, and he pulls him away, telling Grundy that the tree lobsters have to stay together. Grundy looks back at him. Tree lobsters. They continue to fight through the corridors, their weapons thundering in the closed space, and finally Gordon tells them that they all have to make it to the buses. We have to get them to the Gotham Garden, the one run by Ivy and Harley, Gordon tells them, but Jason doesn't think that's a good plan. All the heroes left, Jim. You honestly think the sanctuary's still there? He asks him, continuing to fire his weapon. Jim nods as he reloads. Do you have another option? Moments later, the door to the garage explodes open and the Batmobile races into the waiting undead. The worst road trip of all time has begun. The two buses charge after them, mowing down the anti-life zombies along the way. Rain splattering against the hood as the three vehicles begin the 33-minute drive from Bloodhaven to Gotham City. They charge down the road, the Batmobile clearing a path through the undead in the abandoned cars. They were having a good time, until Slade looked up at the mirror on the bus. What's that? He mutters, seeing the ripples in the mirror's surface. And Mirror Master jumps through the rearview mirror, his claws slashing at Slade's chest. The assassin screams in pain, falling to the floor as the bus careens out of control. Gordon grabs the wheel as Slade's healing factor begins to kick in, and he stands, turning back to the frightened kids. Knock out the windows! He shouts to them, but it's too late. Mirror Master appears again and again, pulling the kids with him through the reflections of the window. Grundy and the kids try to stop him, but the undead are too fast. Mirror Master comes through again, his hands grasping onto the hair of Matilda, Cheetah's favorite, and she launches herself across the bus, her fists punching through Mirror Master's head. You don't get to take this one! She snarls as the former rogue dies. Matilda smiles, petting Cheetah on the head. Good kitty! She smiles, and Cheetah turns, glaring at the rest of the people on the bus. Only she gets to call me that! The Batmobile checks in, and Jim tells the others that they've lost some of the kids but they have little time to mourn them as they arrive at the Gotham Gardens. The city is packed with the undead, their bloody hands clawing at the forest walls of the sanctuary. Jason speeds up in the Batmobile, running through the crowds of the undead, when suddenly an alarm begins to beep and Rose asks if that's a good thing. Yeah, Batman would never install a good alarm, Jason tells her. And a screen pops up as he tells her something is coming in low and fast, and Rose's one good eye goes wide. Jason, I could see the future, and I know what's coming. She gasps, yelling at Jason, buckle your seatbelt. The object slams into the front of the Batmobile, flipping it into the air, landing it with a loud crunch, flattening more of the undead in the process. And from the smoking crater, Wonder Woman stands. 
The super-powered death has arrived. The first bus stops, and Cheetah doesn't wait. She charges at the Amazon hissing. Kick her princess ass! And Matilda cheers from the door, and the villain slams into Wonder Woman, her arch nemesis, but things have changed. The one that was the villain is now the hero, and the hero is now the villain. Slashing at her with her claws, Cheetah begins to win out over Wonder Woman, and inside of the bus, everyone watches. But Slade quickly realizes, Cheetah can't stop the Amazon by herself. And Creeper nods next to him. All right, I guess I'm taking on an undead goddess. He jokes, cracking his knuckles. But he's stopped by Grundy's hand on his shoulder. Not myself. Tree lobsters. The big man tells him softly. They shake hands and they launch themselves into the fight. Cheetah grabbing Wonder Woman and allowing Creeper to kick her hard in the face before Grundy backhands her. They were strong. They wouldn't be able to stand against her forever. Back on the bus, Slade orders Gordon to take all of the kids to the second bus, telling Gordon that he has to go after his daughter. I'm going to clear the path of the rest of you and get Rose. She might not like me much, but that's my fault, he tells the police commissioner, and Jim just tells him that he's going to. That's Batman's son out there, and you might need help with your little girl. We've lost enough kids, Slade. They radio their plan to Lady Shiva, who's driving the second bus, and she curses at them, telling them not to risk their lives for one person. And then she yells for her daughter, Orphan, who is ordering the other kids on the bus. As the last child gets on board, Shiva takes off. But Cassandra Kane is pulled free of the doors by the undead, bringing screams from the children inside. Stay on the bus! Shiva orders them as they stand, ordering the oldest to drive. She draws her sword, leaping outside to join her daughter in battle. Cassandra doesn't understand why her mother would do what she just told Slade not to. Why would she sacrifice herself to save her? Don't make a big deal out of it. Just accept that I love you and shut up, Shiva tells her, her sword cleaving through the mass of the undead that threatens to overwhelm them. Batgirl kicks another in the face, ordering her mother to head back to the bus, and they manage to jump on board. But at the last second, an undead reaches out, slashing Shiva in the back. She whirls, slashing its head off of its body. It's over, Cassandra. She tells her daughter as she turns back, her hand trying to hold in the blood from the wound. Tears fill Cassandra's eyes as she tells her mother that she'll take care of her. But Shiva shakes her head, telling her, a daughter shouldn't have to. You're the only person that I admire. Shiva tells her daughter one last time. Lady Shiva had the deadliest hands on the planet, and with her dying breath, she uses those hands to rip out her own heart. The children watch as the body tumbles off the bus. At the crash site, Gordon finds Jason hanging unconscious while Rose is trying to get herself free. You okay? He asks. Jason's out cold and a few integral bits of my body are broken, she tells him. Outside, Slade's guns are thundering, killing swarms of the undead, and he orders them to get on the bus while he keeps firing. But suddenly, Grundy comes flying through the air, destroying the bus in one blast. Our bus just folded in half and we can't make it to the next one, Gordon tells them. But Slade shakes his head as he reloads. Yeah, you can. I'll keep them off you, he tells them. There's a brief lull and Slade pulls Jason in close. Jason, I like you. Rose can glimpse into the future, so don't even think about hurting her, or she'll probably kill you. Jason nods. I'll remember. Slade turns away, yelling for them to keep going as he keeps firing. Rose calling for her father, asking if he'll be behind them. That is definitely the plan, but in case I'm not, if you survive the apocalypse, build something out of this mess, okay? He tells her. She reaches out, hugging her father. For one last time, Slade hugs back, continuing to fire one-handed into the crowd of the undead. And the fight continues, with Wonder Woman squeezing the life out of Cheetah, literally grabbing her by the throat and just squeezing it until she stops breathing. And then she tears Creeper's head off of his body and slams her fist through Grunty. No day, kids! He gasps as the undead begin to feast on him. And as Rose looks back from the moving bus, she watches as her father fights against the monsters. His guns are empty, but his sword slashes into the rain. And at a brief moment, he was untouchable, unkillable. Wonder Woman then flies through him, his body exploding, and Deathstroke was gone. She slams into the front of the bus, lifting it high into the air, high enough that she throws it back to the earth, and everyone inside is screaming in fear as they careen to their death. And inside, Mary's eyes go wide. She knows what she needs to do. Shazam! She screams with lightning cracking across the sky. She flies upwards, lifting the bus up from the inside, gently placing it onto the ground. The kids are shot. I'll explain later. Just keep driving. Get to the garden. I'm heading out there, she tells them. 
and she flies out into the storm, launching herself at Wonder Woman. She knows that a few months ago, she could never have held her own against Wonder Woman, but that was before she had three months to train with Cassandra Cain. Wonder Woman lashes out, but Mary grabs her fist, snapping them, before punching Wonder Woman hard back down to the Earth. The Earth shudders from the blow, and a massive crater forms beneath Wonder Woman's body. Mary flies down, lifting the bus off of the ground, flying the last few feet into the garden. And inside, Gordon and Rose watch as the leafy gates open before them, letting them inside. Everyone gets off of the bus with Gordon reloading his revolver. Get ready. Wonder Woman will be coming. No, she won't. She can't breach the garden. Poison Ivy tells them from her place atop a massive tree throne. The crowd turns, seeing the others before them. It's magically protected against her and all of her kind, Dr. Fate tells them. Welcome to the post-apocalyptic Eden, Zatanna greets them. It's pretty if you can ignore all the dead scraping at the walls, Constantine adds, taking a drag from his cigarette. Ivy welcomes them, telling the children that they are safe here, and Harley just laughs, happy to have some children to corrupt. You're too late, Harley, Jason tells her. These ones come pre-corrupted, Rose adds with a smile. Though they are safe, sadness passes with the face of the children as they remember those that gave their lives to get them to safety. And time passes, and they erect a statue of the so-called villains that gave their lives to protect a group of strangers. They were villains, saviors, families, tree lobsters. And that concludes Deceased the Unkillables. Now, before we move further, I do want to apologize if any of the voices are off from the originals I did back when the series started. It has been about two and a half months since we had the last issue of Unkillables due to the COVID situation. But I'm glad that we're getting back to normal here. We're getting back to normal comic books. We're getting back to the normal rotation of things. And I'm really hoping that you guys can enjoy these things. Now, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as there is already another Deceased series starting up. It's one of those digital series that I love to cover and no one else seems to on the internet so hey i got you covered here guys it's just like injustice but now it's deceased written by tom taylor the guy that did injustice so it's almost like they were like hey injustice is running thin you know what we should do we should totally start up a series based on these undead zombies that are taking over the entire universe uh yeah it's a great idea i hope you guys are as excited about that as i am and if you're watching this check out our comics experiment podcast on thursday on twitch and saturday here on youtube our heroes in our dungeons and dragons slash superhero game are going into the dc's universe Universe because yeah, deceased is a crazy place and I want to see people die. Thank you guys for your support and I will see you next time right here at the Comic Story Channel.